Hey folks, happy Christmas Eve to everybody out there for another edition of Ask Annette. Annette is a psychic and tower reader here in Rockport, Massachusetts. I am just next door in Gloucester, Mass. My name's Corey, and I moderate uh, Annette from time to time because she needs moderation. <laughs> I definitely need moderation. We all need a little moderation, especially yeah. me. Merry so Christmas. Yeah, so since our last video, Annette, which went crazy, we did that with uh, Linda G, the Comanche psychic, we now have uh, dozens of questions from the viewers, uh, so we should get right to it. Are you ready to go? Are, the, are you locked in with the guides? I am locked in with the guides, but first I'm distracted because you told me you were going to give me that sweater. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> I had to get to you. And you just told me not to get anywhere near Main Street because it's a zoo. I know. I was waiting for it to show up in my lobby, and it never happened. But yeah, this may look like it fits. It really doesn't. <laughs> it goes up to right around my belly belly button. So it's fabulous. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have. When I see you, I have some cherished. Um, did you know that there's a candy cane shortage? For real? Yeah, I read it. There's a candy cane shortage, but I've got the goods if you need them. It's just for the sweater, I need the sweater, and I'll. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a, that's our swap. I can deal with that. So, all right, and are you ready for question number one? Yes, we're ready. Okay, Let's this go. is from Sheila Elliott, and Sheila asks, uh, "Will the U.S. ever recognize how destructive to our Earth the use of fracking to get oil is, and to put restrictions? And will we ever put restrictions on that type of fracking?" Recognize it? They already recognize it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, are you gonna say people's first and last names? I don't know if they. That's how they. That's how they were submitted. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what they called themselves. All right. So Sheila, um, are they gonna recognize the dangers of fracking, and are they gonna do something about it? Essentially. Do you remember yeah. there used to be a show? I don't think I ever watched it. I was just aware of it, called American Greed. Mm -hmm. Did you ever watch that show? I never watched it, but I know what you're talking about. Because as soon as the question was asked, I got, it's American greed. I mean, it's world greed, too, but it's happening in America. Um, we actually have a nefarious sort of a consciousness, a very unconscious in a way, nefarious uh, energy uh, in this country, particularly because we're talking about the United States, that um, doesn't care if people die. It's beyond me. Uh, the, they don't care about that, but you, you know what I mean? <laughs> As I pulled the death card. Uh -oh. This is the death card. Okay. I really think it's going to take lobbyists on the environmental end for that to ever occur. Um, it is dangerous, but you know what? So is nuclear energy. There's no way to get rid of the waste. And I think I recently heard of it in our area. Don't quote me on this, but uh, the power plant, I think it's on the south shore of Massachusetts, that shut down. They're, they don't know what to do with the waste. And so they're, think, they're talking about, I heard this on uh, public radio, they're getting ready to dump a million gallons of um, radioactive waste into the ocean. I know that's not fracking, but I'm just making the point. Uh, it's like, there's, there's no end to what they'll do if they get away with it. So, this is going to be a challenge. The seven of wands is coming up. This is going to be a challenge. This is a time that if you don't like what's going on, if we collectively just sit there, it's going to continue to go on. And it's fracking is extremely dangerous. I think it leads to many earthquakes. And I think that it leads to, um, this is my, my psychic impression. I'm not, I haven't really looked into it in depth, but it leads to contamination of water. And, uh, you know, if you look at what's going on, like, like what's gone on in Flint, Michigan for this is like several years now with the, you know, the uh, contaminants, I think it's lead in the, what is it, the contaminant in the Flint, Michigan water? I can't remember all the contaminants. Yeah, yeah it's, it's horrible, uh, but that's not been clear, cleaned up and, it, you know, we have the technology to do anything, but I, I don't see, not this year. I don't see them raining in fracking. I actually see a lot of lobbyists lobbying for more fracking. Mm. Yikes. Can I have some better news than that? Uh, I'm just going to ask the pendulum. Is the fracking going to be uh, called out? Oh, no. 
Oh, well, that's why we are where we are because of the lobbyists. Now that doesn't mean that that can't change, but the trajectory right now is for more fracking. Mm. I'm trying to think of why that would be like when we should be driving, you know, like cars that are electric and uh, um, not really sure why they would just keep on going with the fracking. It seems like there's an argument that doesn't make a lot of sense to keep it. Maybe they're proposing that it's cheaper than something else, cheaper than maybe nuclear power or something, but did I ever tell you that I studied environmental science early on when I first went to college and I got so afraid I quit? No, I didn't know that. Plus, I'm not a scientist. I had to level with myself. I'm more of a right brain person, but but it just I was at UMass Amherst. And that was my major, mm. environmental studies, and it was just like, yikes! I want to just go bury my head under the sand. <laughs> <It was scary. laughs> we're, we're off to another hot start here. I, I know. I'll open a candy bin. Yeah. I hope everyone's having a good Christmas. So this is Christmas Eve. It's two o'clock here. Yeah. Yeah. Bustle right. on Main Street. Main Street's like insanity That's right good. now. That's good. Good news for small business. Last it'll time stopping. It'll die down. All right. Thanks for the question, Sheila. The next one, Annette, comes from Kimberly Austin, who asks, do you see pot being federally legalized in all 50 states? Yes. Mm. I think for next year, is this, are, we, are we in a time frame here? Like, Not necessarily. No, not for this one. And all 50, I do eventually, I see it being legalized. I was just talking to somebody about this just a little while ago about how it used to be like this illicit thing that was kind of, you had to sneak kind of like, you know, the whole prohibition era when you had to sneak to get your moonshine you know, sold to your neighbors, yep. that kind of thing to share your moonshine. Um, it's funny how it's just gone from something that you had to sneak around with to like, I mean, I just heard like, I hear Jimmy Kimmel joking about, you know, Guamro being stone. And <laughs> it's like, so I really do think it's going to be legal in all 50 states. And I see there are monetary reasons for that. Because, uh, you know, the states collect, I mean, Massachusetts is doing pretty well on that, opening all these pot stores. Um, plus, it being used to, for medicinal use kind of legitimizes it. I'm just asking the pendulum if it's going to be all 50 states. I'm going to say within two years, because within one year, no, that's just, that's a, that's a big stretch. Within two years, yes. Hmm. Yes, all 50 states within two years. I don't see it within one year. Good news you for know, a lot of people we know in that. You know how fast a year goes. Yeah. But you are right about those pot shops. They're popping up all over the place right now. Yeah, I think it's just about every city, it seems. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for the question, Kimberly. We appreciate it. All right, the next one, our next question comes from Patsy Forte. Um, this was a, this was a really cool and interesting question. Annette, could you possibly look into why and how are so many Native American women going missing and murdered? Oh, that's been a question for a while. I think mm -hmm. that's been posed to the psychics. It's kidnapping. It's out and out kidnapping. Um, I'm, I see a vision of like a car pulling up and just grabbing a woman. Um, I think the question is pointing to why is it Native Americans? Yes. The guys are just saying it's been that way since the since America was settled. You know, it's just like racism. It's like, you know, I mean, racism with the African American population, you know, and in so, some regards, that hasn't gone away. Right? So it's do you have any lighter questions today? <laughs> there are, but yeah, they're, you are know, they they're all, okay. Okay, yeah, so they run the gamut. Coming. It's interesting. Yeah, I'm getting, they're kidnapped mm. and they're taken. And I do unfortunately see trafficking, not well, obviously not in all cases, uh, but I do see that happening. Um, and I see some being just hidden away um, undercover. I don't know how long somebody can do that. But, but I clearly get they're being kidnapped mm. by, uh, it just feels like racism, you know? Like lynching is to the African-American population, 
this is kind of what, uh, you know, the guides are just showing me when the settlers came and there were, you know, massacres of the Native Americans, there was a consciousness of they're just like, they're not human. There's like a less than human kind of a perception. It's horrible. But uh, yeah, the Three of Swords, it's, it's, when you think of what's happened to the Native Americans, it's, it's just, it boggles your mind and the Black you know, population. Um, it, it boggles the brain, it boggles the brain that we're still here. We're still here. I just want to mention that my guru, uh, sad guru, if anybody's interested, took a motorcycle trip all the way o all over the United States. You can look it up. And he met all the like he went to all these different Native American places and was, you know, with uh, the reservations, was with the, the elders and, you know, really sort of communed with them and you know they they talked and i think that um i kind of feel like he planted seeds to uh of healing i really do because he's he, you know he's a mystic he's a spiritual guy the moon is like this is very 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 emotional we need to pray for those girls because some of them will return unfortunately i don't feel like it's like the majority do return the chariot is um you know i heard a story about remember when brian uh, murdered his girlfriend Gabby uh, Petito. I heard a story that was really interesting. It was another psychic on YouTube mentioned that she read that after Gabby disappeared, the the consciousness was raised of all these missing Native Americans, these missing women, and how they went like searching far and wide for Gabby and what she's a white girl right but what about the Native American girls so as a result of that happening that unfortunate horrible event because the awareness got raised they actually found more missing bodies of like the Native Americans that had been abducted and killed so I thought that was really interesting um when I see the chariot card I kind of brought that to mind because these cases will, as they happen, uh, it's so tragic, they will also raise awareness that we need to pay attention to everybody, regardless of your skin color, right? Your heritage. So yeah, that's a very, very dark thing. Um, but I do see improvement in that. By the end of next year, I feel like it's gonna be happening less, fortunately. Hmm. What are you doing for the new, what are you doing for the new year? I think I'm hanging out with you and Linda G at some point. Oh, yeah, 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 right. Yeah. The actual <laughs> holiday itself, I don't, I don't know yet. I never know what's going on. Yeah. Plus, we have all know. the weird, like you know, we're supposed to fly away this week, but there's all kinds of flights being canceled. Uh, yeah, you know what? About staffing. that. What? I think it was you. Somebody asked me if there were going to be more lockdowns. I'm pretty sure it was you. And this was months ago. I said, mm -hmm. Yeah, I see more lockdowns, and that was when Delta hadn't even hit yet. So I'm kind of going like, what am I crazy saying there's going to be more lockdowns? It looks like we're at the end of this, you know, my logical brain. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have lockdowns. I'm sure that's one of your questions, too. Yeah, we have a lot of similar questions. But COVID related. Yeah. Well, this is a little slightly different one, right? This is cool. This uh -huh. is from Leo C. And Leo asks, Annette, what types of TV shows and movies should writers write more of, and what can TV and film executives do to make what's on screen be more positive? Ha! One time, hang on, I mean, candy, candy cane. One time when I lived in Nashville, I decided to go to screenwriter meetings. Yeah. Because I'm a songwriter, and I just thought that would be, you know, fascinating and would help me with, with just ideas for songwriting. But anyway, I remember going to this one meeting where the, the teacher really heavily emphasized, if you don't have sex and you don't have violence, Hollywood's not gonna be interested. This was years ago. Yep. And that really stuck with me. And I think that with the Alec Baldwin situation, where that poor camera woman got murdered, mm -hmm. if you wanna get into that situation, I did go on about that a little bit on my PNN, my Psychic News Network. Um, mm -hmm. I almost, I wonder if, I wonder if Alec is going to do this. I can look at that. Uh, I feel like that raised awareness. 
Oh yeah, this is interesting because I feel like within about three years, Alec Baldwin has been really messed up by the violence, by that violent thing that happened, that accident. Um, he might sort of find healing in promoting nonviolence in movies. Hmm. And we totally need that. People have become so kind of numb to violence um, and it's causing violence. You know what's interesting in that though too? It's when I saw this question, the first thing I thought about was TV shows like Touched by an Angel. Whenever they've had those shows on networks TV, they've always done really well, like top 10 shows perennially, but there isn't anything like that now. You know, no real religious uh, undertones to um, network television shows. You know what also happened in the late 80s? Uh, I think it was the late 80s, mid 80s. Um, we are the world. We are. The, you remember that? I mean, yeah, it was USA just, for Africa. Weather, and it was just like everybody love one another. And it's, it's like, what happened? Um, yeah, touched by an angel. I don't know if I watched. Was that Michael Landon? No, that was. Um, yeah, what was the one that he was? I know what you're talking about. It wasn't that. Was that it? I thought touched by an angel was the the uh, the woman. I don't know. I'm not a TV watcher, really, in Della general. Reese, Della Reese was, I'll look it up while you're doing your thing. But Michael Landon, I'm pretty sure, was in one of those series about angels. Yeah, you can Google it. You can Google anything. Uh, I, well, I knew I was right. It was Della Reese. I was right. Oh, which one was he in? I'll find out. Oh, Valerie Bertinelli was in that, too. I forgot about that. And Touched by an Angel. Touched by an Angel, yeah. But I'm pretty sure Michael Landon played an angel. He wasn't anyway. He was an angel. I was devastated when he died. Were you? I love Little House on the Prairie. What can I say? <laughs> Very wholesome. <laughs> I know you might not think that, but Oh, Highway to Heaven. Oh yeah, yeah. So that was that was that also in the nineties? Uh no, eighties. These shows are in the eighties. Okay, so the eighties are in the eighties. Um, was it like the late eighties? 84 to 89, yep. Okay, so in the 80s, there was this thing, it was called the Harmonic Convergence. And it was like when all the planets aligned and all, it was gonna be like peace and love and harmony and healing and the world was gonna unite and all this stuff was happening that just really, you know, pointed to, we're gonna be great, we're gonna have world peace and, and all that. And then things just kind of went a little haywire. Um, Trying to peg it, like, to, to where. So Hollywood, I think, you know, from what I'm seeing here, I have the Eight of Cups and the Five of Pentacles. They're starting to see the, the, the effect. I mean, years ago, I remember hearing that a little child before they were the age of, I don't know, three or something, witnessed, like, 10,000 violent acts on TV, right? You might remember that when they were doing studies like that. Um, and then, you know, nowadays you see like Kyle, Kyle Rittenhouse, you know, shooting up people and getting away with it. And like, it's become normalized. And I think that with the Alec Baldwin situation, Hollywood, because, you know, somebody died at the hands of a gun. Uh, I think that Hollywood is going to take a pause. Not all of Hollywood, but the guides are saying like 30%, which is pretty high. When you consider, like, if you wanted to write a screenplay, the Hollywood would even glance at it. it had to have massive amounts of violence. Uh, but they're going to start losing. I actually feel like people in Hollywood have, of course, not everyone, but they kind of have a soul. I feel like artists are more heart-centered. They're more tuned into their heart. And I see women, producers and directors, kind of... Uh, leading the charge there. I think we're gonna see some changes. I think it's gonna be around, uh, we'll notice it around the fall. I see conversation around taking all this violence out of, it's obviously not all the movies, but taking a look at it. I mean, right now people, you know, maybe they're watching the Hallmark Christmas shows. I don't watch them. Have you watched the Hallmark Christmas specials? Are you kidding me? They always get to, well, you have the sweater on and everything. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, I'm normally not this Christmassy, folks. You look like a Hallmark card. Is that a yeah. snowman in the back? That's the vibe we're going for. There's a lot going on here today. 
Is that a snowman? What's in the back there? Which which side of me? Oh, something's shining. It looks like a snowman from here, but I, I don't that's know literally that. that's an empty whiskey bottle with a bunch of lights, Christmas lights. <laughs> a drunken snowman. Yeah. <laughs> he turned into the whiskey bottle. Yeah. What kind of whiskey is that? I think that was bullet rye. But you yeah. don't remember? It's a bullet rye. Yeah. Of course, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas. Yeah. So anyway, that was good news on the on the Hollywood and the violence front. I, honestly, I it really that's that makes me that's like, that makes me feel better actually, because I know that we've been so desensitized to violence. The more you are exposed to something, the more desensitized you become. Mm. I really noticed it because I cannot watch violence. It has I have a visceral reaction. I think that everybody does, but they just kind of got used to that, right? Are you a violence watcher? No, I'm not. Yeah, if you watch a lot of it, you just kind of get desensitized. Um, have you seen the new Matrix movie? Is it out yet? I didn't see the old Matrix movie. Oh, man, you gotta see the Matrix. I worked in Hollywood for so long, I didn't want to watch another TV show or movie again. I wasn't really um, like a, a cinephile to begin with. Are you, are you, you have to watch it. That's your homework. Yeah. Oh, jeez. We are in the Matrix. We are. Um... Anyway, what's the next question? I could go on about that, but I won't because I'll just go down the rabbit hole and take the blue pill and off I'll go. Yeah. Okay. The next question comes from Simba Locke who asks, is the coronavirus causing a mass exodus off the planet? And will this continue in 2022? Also, is there some other natural phenomenon that might cause a mass exodus? People, I don't mean to ruin your day, but we're heading for mass extinction. Whoa. <laughs> but you know, she doesn't mean to ruin your day, folks. But, but we're all like goners. That. Some people might like that. Um, so is COVID the start of that? Is that the gist of that question? Is it is it causing a mass exodus? So mass exodus, I guess I'm hung up on that. Um, right. I think it's Bible and I think mass exodus, like we can't just leave unless Jeff Bezos and what's his face? Elon and uh, the other one. Who's the other one? The rocket ships? I just see the other guys. Like I know William Shatner's been up there before and Michael Strahan. I met Shatner before. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, the other one is Branson. Um, mm -hmm. I actually think they're planning a, max, a mass exodus. But you have to be rich enough to get on the spaceship that's going to take you away. They um, can go. We are, we, you know, I, I mentioned on my channel the other day that I was watching Curiosity Stream, which is an app that has all these cool documentaries. And uh, they, they, there was one about the dinosaurs and how the dinosaurs, they went through a mass extinction. Uh, and the scientists were saying that we are on, we're, we're on the track for mass extinction. So COVID is actually, honestly, the guides are just telling me it's, it's just the, the very, 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 very beginning of it. Now, I'm of the belief that we can turn some things around because we have the technology to do, do that. Um, is that person asking for a time frame? Well, just asking if there was a mass exodus occurring, is it going to happen throughout 2022? Or is there some other natural phenomena uh, that might cause a mass exodus? We, we, the other day I was walking and my guide said, we'll be losing, <laughs> this is the way it was put, vast swaths of the population just you know carpe diem because <laughs> where's my jingle bell sound effect i know get that what why that whiskey is empty you might need oh to my god in it refresh <laughs> refresh there's hope if we figure that you know what i have this there's hope if we decide no really the guides did say that to me there will be vast swaths of the population disappearing. Now, I, I don't have a time frame on that. Um, we've already killed off. Humanity is already, I don't even want to call it humanity. The dumb, dumb, dumb men have uh, led to the extinction of one million species. If you think about one million species of plants and animals, we are animals. We're next. Right? I mean, this doesn't take a psychic. The scientists know this. So the moon is like, we are going to go really deep with our emotions around, you know, what's 
what's going on here. Uh, when things are tough, we tend to reflect. Sometimes we have to, right? I mean, if something, uh, you know, even when people die, we self-reflect. So when something major is happening, not only with COVID, but climate change, we all have to kind of reflect. I'm feeling bad, but I feel like I'm bumming everybody out right now. It's Christmas. Can't you tell? <laughs> Where are your jingle bells? Like, we need some jingle bells right now. Yeah. Let me see. Can I help you? That's something. Jingle bells. Uh, the Nine of Cups. That We have the resources to stop this from happening. Um, I felt like COVID, when it first hit, I even wrote a newsletter about it, was our, our signal to slow the heck down. And I don't mean to sound cliche, but I just feel like we were, this is, I literally got the message from my guides. We were headed, we were fast tracking for extinction. And COVID kind of hit the pause. And I actually was a, a little bit heartened by the plane stopped flying and people stopped driving so much. And remember the air cleared up? Mm. And uh, Bomb, uh, they used to call it Bombay, Mumbai in India. Yeah. They could see the Himalayas and they couldn't see them for like 30 years. So I, I got a little hopeful then, but now, you know, as long as people are still got to gotta, gotta go, 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 go without stopping and reflecting, we're definitely headed for a mass exodus. The Queen of Wands says the women will lead the way. So people don't get too freaked out because we're not going to, I mean, we're going to make it through this, this, our lifetime. Um, we will see more pandemics. People are talking about the permafrost. I mean, I know people have been talking about the scientists and permafrost is giving rise to these diseases that were long, long ago frozen in the ice. Um, I'm not seeing a ton of that in our lifetimes anyway. Mm. So I think the answer is yes. Yeah, but okay, great question, Simulok. Thanks for that. All right, on to the next question, moving right along. Um, two people asked something similar. I'm going to try to combine them here and give them both credit. This is Yuno Yutsu who asks, will our flag, will the U.S. flag be redesigned? I hope and also, so. Also, Laura Carlson asks, wait, hold on, no, Colleen Braun, will the District of Columbia, the, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico get statehood? I tie those in together because obviously if you add or take away a state, the flag's going to have to be redesigned. So anyway, let's talk, let's, I guess, focus on that statehood question. D.C., you know, the Virgin Islands, or Puerto Rico? I do see them becoming states. I do. Um, and, and in fact, I, I have this feeling the Virgin Islands are already, well, they're not on the flag. It's not one of the, you know. It's yeah, not territory, but not statehood. Right. Yeah, but, I, but, but to my psychic brain, the Virgin Islands are already states i mean to my psychic brain i mean i know it's not like on paper mm -hmm. puerto rico yes i'm getting the number five like it's going to take five years for this all to play out and, and you know what i see the uh the, the extreme right making all kinds of like doomsday predictions of what's going to happen to the united states if we take on puerto rico i kind of feel like puerto rico is already I don't know. I kind of feel like they're already states. Let me ask the pendulum. Are they all three going to become states? Not all three. Okay, so Puerto Rico, yes. Virgin Islands, yes. I think it's going to be obviously in different time frames. What was the third one? I forgot. District of Columbia, DC. Oh, uh, DC. Okay, yeah, DC, DC. Yeah, yeah. All three. That's practically treated like a state now. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised that it isn't. It doesn't make any sense to me. Mm. Let me. I, I have a few cards on that too. It's a yeah, there'll be a flag redesign. The judgment card. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. I have something to say about that. Um, the judgment card is um, when 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 people really look at it. You know, when our government really looks at it, it just makes sense to make them states. And I'm seeing resources because of resources. And the two of cups, yeah, two of cups is like an agreement, like a handshake kind of. I know they're kissing, but it's kind of like a handshake. Yes, okay, so the flag. Um, 
the other day, honestly, I, I, I was struck by this. I saw a truck, I saw a pickup truck. On the back, there was <clears throat> sort of a picture of the constitution. You know, the we the people and the script and the calligraphy. So you may have seen this truck. I don't know who, who it belongs to, but um, just around town. So, so it was like calligraphy, we the people, and, then, and there was a flag. And my immediate thought wasn't, oh, that person is for democracy. How cool is that, right? In the old days, it would have been that. How cool, the US Constitution is, you know, <laughs> imprinted on this person's truck. Uh, since January 6th, especially since January 6th, since the Capitol Police officers were literally beaten up with the American flag, uh, it's lost, it's, it's, it's lost so much meaning. Uh, it's been bastardized is what the guides are saying. Uh, uh, so I do feel that it will change and I'm just gonna be careful Like I want it to change because I want to be looking at a flag that means what it originally meant. You know, like I pledge allegiance to the flag, liberty and justice for all kind of thing. Mm. So I'm gonna pick three cards about that. Okay. We wanna thank Juno and Colleen for the questions. Yes, definitely. Thank you for viewing us and, you know, all the positive comments for sure. Uh, this is this is what the flag, this is really, you know, the Three of Swords is a massive heartbreak. I mean, I think about people in the military and our veterans and like how just heartbreaking it is what's happening in this country. The tower card is like, the, the flag is now associated with attack, disruption, collapse, and disappointment and total heartbreak. So the Ace of Pentacles says, yes, there will be talk of a new flag design. It's time, it's time, it's, it's lost its meaning. Um, and I actually am picking up less influence by extreme right wing, uh, you know, like white supremacist. Kind of, I, I'm actually picking up a lot less influence. And when, when it goes down, we will, um, We'll see more talk about that. Because right now, you can't even, oh my gosh, if you mention it, Fox News will be like, they'll be jumping all over it and, you know, freaking everyone out. Is that is that an adequate answer, Mr. Corey? It doesn't for me. We'll have to ask Colleen and uh, Juno what they think. But that's what that works for me. I do. I actually see, um, I see like, uh, like invitations going out to people to, bring in, put in their design ideas kind of thing, just to put in their two cents. And like, now, now Betsy Ross, like designed the flag, right? Yeah, she was part of that, yeah. Did someone commission her? I gotta go back to my American history and. Well, there are other people who were devising flags too, designing flags way back when. Yeah, and then it she won. She won, she won the contest, right? Yeah, the history of the flag is pretty amazing. I mean, there were dozens of, of American flags before stars and stripes. Yeah, but the oh. one with the circle of uh, stars. There's a ton. Well, there's the old, that old, um, you know, the 13 um, original colonies flag. But there right. were even others that didn't even have stars and bars. Yeah, I'm thinking about the 13 colonies one. Yeah. Which you see around here. A lot. Yeah. Okay. These are interesting questions. Yeah, interesting stuff. Okay, moving on. Thanks for that question. All right. The next question comes from Enzingelsis. Enzingelsis. Something like, I like that. Things just as much as the questions. Yeah. It's a topic. <laughs> is there and, a John or Jane? <laughs> well, they're just asking about he or she is asking about the housing market. Is the is twenty twenty two a good time to buy or should they hold off until twenty twenty three? I get that question a lot. Mm -hmm. um, people are really freaked out about that. Um, 2023 feels like a good year for the housing market. In 2022, it's going to still be bumpy, but I just would, I would like for people to stop panicking. Do you remember speaking to that? I think it might have been the last show that you and I did, uh, or the show before, the shipping. Uh, they were talking about we're going to have all these shortages and oh my god we're all going to starve to death and, you just you know, told us there's a candy cane shortage i know what's up with that we heard Maybe christmas trees a month ago now candy <laughs> canes no it was here's i have a tree i got a wreath you got candy canes we're fine no it wasn't 
wasn't Christmas trees, it was turkeys. Oh yeah, that's right, it was turkeys, but then we also yeah. did hear Christmas trees too. Did you hear that? I don't, yeah. I don't remember hearing that. Yeah. Where is our Christmas tree shortage? Well, I think a, a big problem was sort of the um, uh, traveling between Canada and the U.S. too. That's normally, that's, we're in New England, folks. A lot of people, we get our trees from uh, Canada. Not that yeah, we're like lacking trees Nova around Scotia. here, but. Like Nova Scotia. Yeah, remember when they were, everyone was worried that we were going to have all these supply shortages, the supply chain, the supply chain, was, and they're still talking about that on Fox News. And, and that, you know what it is right now? It's COVID tests. COVID tests are the new toilet paper. We are totally going to get COVID tests. Yeah. Now I'm totally off the, the question. I don't even know what it was. Well, it was the housing, the housing market. Yeah. In Zingle, sis. Sorry about oh, there that. There was a connection. There was a connection. We're in holiday overwhelm brain yeah. here. Um, well, the connection was that everyone was so like, oh, the supply chain, supply chain. And everyone was like hysterical about it. And then it never happened. I feel the same way about the housing market. You know, I, I said to the, you the saying before, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. It's, it doesn't feel like it's a huge problem. I'll pick three cards in here. I do feel like it's going to improve in 2023. I'm just not feeling that like dire circumstances. I mean, good Lord, if anybody, I know we haven't because we're not old enough, but if anybody ever had spoken to somebody who lived through the Great Depression, this is probably nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, this is the like, housing market, it is pretty bananas right now. I know, but we'll be okay. Live in a tiny house. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be flipped, but I'm just saying, you know, the, the, when people act like they don't have a roof over their head when they totally do, there's no no danger of them, you know, no imminent danger that they're going to lose their home or, you know, not be able to find a home. Uh, the Queen of Pentacles, yes, it's going to improve. Mm. Um, this the housing market does have to kind of reconfigure, and we're going through a reconfiguration of everything, not just the housing market. The economy is changing. We're, we are going to be an economy that's a, away from the old conventional things that we're paying lots of money and into more um, sustainable. So. And, you know, I just mentioned tiny houses. I mean, I really do think that we're going to see the proliferation of people buying smaller houses. And I also see a proliferation of people living together as groups. Mm. Whenever I say that, it just seems like people hate when I say that. And I'm like, well, do you really hate people that much? It seems natural to me. It's how it used we're to be. Tri we're tribal beings. And, you know, and you think about why are people so miserable? Well, they don't want to be around anybody. <laughs> we have to learn how to get along, seriously. Next question. All right, great question there, and zingle, sis. We thank you for that. Yeah, don't worry right. about the housing market. It's going to straighten itself out by 2023. All right, I'm, I'm combining two other questions again because they're sort of similar. Um, they're from uh, Karen and Joyce. Karen asks, will there be serious earthquake concerns for the yeah. Olympic Peninsula in Seattle in 2022? Yeah. Joyce asks, can yes. you take a look at the potential damage to Washington State from the Doomsday Glacier? When this great, great glacier Doomsday breaks free, it is predicted to impact the world. So we're over in the, in the northwest corner of the states and its impact on the world, any natural phenomena there. The Doomsday Glacier, that's actually what they call it? Mm-hmm. We should change the name. The might could happen someday glacier. <laughs> yeah. What's it gonna do? Break off or something? Uh they're saying when it breaks off. Well, that's what this is what Joyce is saying. It is predicted to impact the world. Jesus, this show today is so educational. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what's cool about this is we, you know, we have um an international audience now. This isn't just me in, in uh, our hometown. You know, this is great. We really, I, folks. I am. We do take these questions from the comments section and then the community section too. So we we do the best we can. It's a lot. We're over. Annette and I are overwhelmed getting used to how things go here in the world of YouTube. Thank you, Linda G. Taking a lot of arrows from uh, 
<laughs> for folks yeah. out there too. A lot of love and a lot of poison arrows, depends. Yeah. We take yeah. them all. Par for the course, it's the way it goes, right? Um, yeah. yeah, so I was just singing, we are the world. How cute. Mm. <laughs> we are the world. Hi world. Uh, okay, so I don't really feel that particular glacier. I do have to look that up, but it's better that I don't know a lot. I don't feel like that's imminent. I do feel like what's imminent. In the last show we talked about, I think it was you and I, um, just the two of us that time, when I said, I feel the earth shaking. And then the next day there were earthquakes. Mm. There's a whole bunch of earthquakes. I'm trying to remember if that was my show or I'm pretty sure I was with you. Uh, I'm pretty sure there also was a recent earthquake in Washington State off the coast, maybe. Maybe that's anyway, the peninsula. The earth is shaking. The earth is going to continue to shake. Yeah. That glacier doesn't feel as imminent as the tectonic plates shifting. More. Volcanic activity. More. I'm telling you, we're going through a time where it's going to be like, whoa, WTF, all, all over the place. It's going to be challenging. I, I actually see scientists working right now on how we can prepare for this. Uh, well, we can't make it not happen. Even though I, even though on a separate note, I do see scientists working on how to scientifically keep the globe from warming up. I do see that. So it's going to be challenging. And I think that what they're working on more than anything is a preparedness for earthquakes. I don't see the glacier thing just yet. The lever card is like people are going to start cooperating in terms of paying attention to the science of these potentially disastrous events to be ready. The four of cups is like it's a blessing in disguise that we kind of know what's the, what the dangers are so we can get ready kind of reminds me of all you know all the wildfires now people are needing to build you know fireproof like homes and roofs and all that mm. um i have to look up the the doomsday glacier yeah i think i'm scared to live someplace where there's a doomsday glacier around me don't you yep it's right off the coast of washington state well i don't know if it is you're gonna have to google it because it may be from it could be arctic circle right it right. could be that's what i think off the russia siberian coast or something yeah off of alaska and just the impact it may have that's why i'm feeling like that's not as imminent as the earthquakes that are coming you gotta get my atlas out your globe yeah. Do you have one of those? I'm going to get one. One of those so I can spin it. Yeah, I always had one of those growing up. My fingers would get yeah. caught in the thing. Yeah, I, I, I do. I see earthquakes. I, the guys are just showing me an earthquake in Russia. That's interesting. Mm. All right. Okay. Great questions, uh, Joyce and Karen. Thank you for that. All right. Moving on. Here is one from uh, Kimberly Little Givens. Uh, Kim asks or says, the aliens are supposed to be just dis, uh, disclosed in a few years. Why am I laughing? <laughs> well, I don't know. This is we somehow turned this into a game. The aliens show. are coming. The aliens are coming. All right. So the aliens are supposed to be disclosed in a few years. What kind of help do the aliens bring when they arrive? Environmental help, medicinal help. What could it be? Thanks, Kimberly. They were, they, they've been doing this all along. This is not new. We talked about this on the show with Linda. Uh, they have already been helping us. The reason that we have the, the level of technology that we have, then now you're going to be able to just like, I don't know how it works. Maybe you know how it works. Like morph yourself into this meta thing and go to a concert with your friends. Mm. I mean, this, this, this that we're able to do with technology is, was given to us by the aliens, by the ETs. I know this, like, I just know it in my being. Uh, so as a question, have they been, or are they going to be? What kind of help will they bring? Okay. They will help us to not blow ourselves up in a nuclear annihilation. Mm. That's first and foremost. That's the primary thing. 
they don't want us to commit mass like extinction that way. I mean, we're heading for it, but it's just, I think it disrupts the universe. I think it disrupts the other galaxies too much for us to blow ourselves up in a nuclear war. So they are keeping tabs on that. Um, medicine, that's more, uh, that's more human in, in terms of like, I don't know, it's not so much ET influence there. It's mostly with technology. It's mostly technology. And I, I feel like the guys are just telling me like uh, that whole Roswell thing, when they captured that spaceship, this is this, this channel is for entertainment purposes only. I feel like they, they actually adopted some of, I, I feel like they saw the technology and they actually examined it and they still have it. And uh, they, they learned a lot from that spaceship. And, and the guides are telling me there's more than one. There's more than one Roswell. Wow, that's an interesting download. Because I, I'm feeling like this is interesting that I keep going to Russia, Russia, that's weird. Because Russia's where Chernobyl was, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like the ETs have, they're hovering over Russia right now. They're probably going, Vlad? <laughs> Wagging their feet, Vlad, behave. Uh, I do feel like they, um, they have crashed in certain locations around the world. This is my psychic impression only. And that in secret, the different, you know, secret organizations uh, went in and, and figured out the technology. We'll never know. I don't think we'll ever know about that. But remember last year, the 2021 20, predictions that we did just last year at this time? Mm -hmm. I said, this will. This is the year. I mean, in this year, that we'll find out that aliens are real, and then not more than five weeks later, that it was all over the news. The NASA was going to come out with it. Is it NASA? Like Pentagon, all that. right? Because the Pentagon, yeah. The CIA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the word, then all of a sudden we started seeing pictures of these spaceships and everything, and they had to cop to it. And I told you that people would would be really frightened. That's why they don't let the cat out of the bag. It's too much for us. We can't handle another species that's like more intelligent than us. And in many ways, they're more intelligent, but they don't have like emotions. It's a very odd thing. And that's kind of, they're kind of like Elon Musk in that. You know, good old, my buddy Elon. But you know, he's got, and, and Zuckerberg's like that too. So he makes you wonder. They're kind of like a little bit not human. They're not, they're more like machines. No opinion on that. I have plenty of opinions on that. This is asking <laughs> Nick, <laughs> not ask Corey. Anyway, yeah, the ETs, they have been giving us information along the way, but it's the first time I got a download that they, that they that humans have received the information through crashed uh, spaceships. Mm. They just kind of went in and dissected them. Like, oh, what are they doing here? We should, we should try that. We'll have like Facebook and stuff and electric cars. And everything else. Well, and then and then that indirectly connects to the medical industry too, because it's tech, so much technology. That's just not as directly. Hmm. Well, that's cool. This brings us actually to our next question, which is a nice one from Nancy Samp. And Nancy asks, "Will significant progress be made in 2022 for the treatment and care of Alzheimer's disease?" I see a cure for Alzheimer's. Wow. I do. I see a cure. And it's going to go like this. It's going to go like <clears throat> similar to in the 1980s. And, you know, when cancer started to, to, to be like really prevalent. And, you know, I attribute that to nuclear power plants and radioactive, radioactive waste uh, in a big way, plus contaminants. But when when cancer came to be. It was a death sentence. And then, you know, we kind of got a cure in a way because people don't, a lot of people don't die from cancer, fortunately. Um, it's been slow. I feel like with a cure for Alzheimer's, it's not going to be as slow, but it's going to be kind of hit going at it from all different angles and seeing what sticks. But I do feel like there's a serious 
this is really good news. My parents are elderly. This is good to know. Um, there's a serious, uh, there's a drug. It looks like a prescription drug that's getting excellent results. And I'm getting more, you know, in the more immediate future, it's going to be, um, it slows it down really significantly. So somebody can have a touch of Alzheimer's that doesn't progress to being full-fledged. The person can't remember anybody's name or and it's just like a vegetable. It's a very scary disease. I mean, the most important thing we have, you know, in so many ways is our brain. We don't have our brains. Where are we? It's, it's really, it's, it's terrible. So the death card is, um, there'll be an end to it being the end of someone's life. And the Ten of Pentacles is a lot of money being thrown at this right now. Tons of money being thrown at it. And the star card, it looks like it's going to come out of the United States. The drug. Mm. That's really optimistic. Phew, I'm glad I got some optimistic answer to something. Yeah, that was a nice one. And it's better, than mass, question, Nancy. Mass, <laughs> better than mass extinction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for that. All right, let's get back to what we're here for. People want to talk about... Um, January 6th, Annette. I, so, I was waiting for it. Indirectly here, this is from S. Barb. S. Barb asked, did the uproar about student loans and other issues come up to distract us from the January 6th committee? No. I don't I don't I don't know of any uproar about student loans. Do you do you know what that's referring to? Well, I, they asked you to be uh, forgiven. Is that being debated right now? I don't know why anyone would debate that. I mean, the problem that we're having in this country is that people can't afford to get an education. So you have brilliant, genius minds that are, can't, can't afford to get an education. And then the people with the rich, all the money that have no business going to, I mean, I don't mean to be insulting, but I think everyone knows what I mean by that. It's like- Well, the, the American college and university system is out of whack too. I mean, I don't know how so, many can afford going. So how, um, I'm trying to see the connection. Hmm. Well, were there just other stories out there to distract folks from? Well, yeah, there, well, if you watch Fox News, you wouldn't believe what they're saying. Uh, I do need to watch it someday. I see, I see clips of it on videos. Uh, no, you know what? I really feel like the January 6th news, the commission, the report, I just feel this kind of like it's going to be cruising forward with mega amounts of information that are undeniable. It's going to be a very, very tough time for the United States because we're going to see these people that were involved in it, the, these Republicans that were involved, that they were part of it, denying it and attempting to get away with it. And that, that's just going to cut to the bone. That's going to be really hard. Um, the other news stories are not going to supersede the January 6th commission stories, no matter how you slice it. Even if you're an, a, you know, hardcore Fox News watcher or alternative facts uh, watcher. They're going to try to, you know, those kinds of news outlets, they're not even news, propaganda outlets are going to be doing a little bit of a, you know, like a, the two-step trying to dance their way out of it. The Empress is the United States uh, and all the information that they're getting. The Empress has got all that she needs. The hangman is, a, you know, they're going to have to surrender. Those who are guilty, and I mean guilty as sin, are going to have to surrender. There's nothing else they're going to be able to do. And I mean, I see the January 6th commission, and they're already doing it, coming up with hard, fast, evidence and all these republicans that were in on it will be able to say is things like well i didn't mean it like that or it wasn't that bad though like that so it's unbelievable mm -hmm. there'll be lots of sides there'll be lots of attempts to distract mm -hmm. from right yeah but i don't think it's going to work much longer i really don't i think it's just going to be too too big this is like the biggest thing that ever happened in the united states Honestly, and, and that that anybody would try to downplay it and say, oh, it's a bunch of tourists is just it makes me sick. Anyway. All right. And that, Happy topics. <laughs> that's OK. So we have you have about five minutes before your next appointment. And I'm just telling yes, you. I yeah. Um, so do you want to play a little speed round? 
Yeah, sure. Let's go. Yeah, we have go a whole ahead. bunch of questions people have asked that I think you can answer sort of simply. But all right, we're on, we're short on time, folks. So these are your questions. We're asking Annette right now. Okay, from Laura Carlson. Does Merrick Garland still want on the Supreme Court? No. Hmm. You're good. Should I say right. more? <laughs> He's very busy. Yeah, if you need to expand, you always can. That's up to you. But. Uh, okay, well, hang on. Um, Merrick Garland is... He really meant to go in there, and I'm not saying he's not doing it. And get the job done with the January 6th whole commission with all this investigation. And he's really, right now, he's kind of sifting through the people that need to get out of the way so he can do his job. Um, but he's got no interest in being on the Supreme Court. That that ship has sailed. All right. Next question is from Susan Brosheen. She asks, will Kamala Harris, what will she be doing in 2022 where her approval ratings improve? I hate to say it, but the reason her approval ratings are down is because she's a woman. Misogyny is alive and well, unfortunately. The only reason her numbers are down is she's a woman. Because you know what? We never have really heard much from the vice president throughout history. Like, we probably don't even remember half of the vice presidents in our lifetime. Right. Unless they did something stupid. Like, it wasn't Dan Quayle, like, Everyone made fun of Dan Quayle because not that he was stupid, but he was just like kind of dull or something. And, you know, we didn't hear much from Biden. It was all Obama. Uh, Kamala is being bashed for being a woman. And we have to get we're going to see more women's rights. Well, that's good news. More women's rights being at the forefront of our of our national conversation. And that's going to help to to boost her. I actually think that she could run for president. Yeah, I see her running for president. Wow. All right. Okay. She's that actually... far off. She's kind of far off in the future. So, I mean, I mean, to predict now. Okay. Thanks, Susan. All right. It actually rolls into Marie Henson's question. Will women finally get the ERA? Will they get at the ERA? Mm-hmm. We have an ERA. I know. What does that mean? maybe more of an ER. We have an ER, we have an equal rights amendment, right? Did I miss something? Did it go away? I hope not like Roe versus Wade. I don't, I don't think, no, no, no. You know what, actually what's going to happen is that we're going to reinforce Roe versus Wade. We're going to reinforce it. We're going to make it stronger because of this resistance that we're up against and the equal rights for women. No, it's going to get stronger. The women are rising up. I say it all the time. Um, right. I want more cards because we're, Wind them. Just a couple of minutes left here. People want to know about the Florida governor's race, DeSantis, et cetera. What do you have on that? I have said for some time that I saw a, a woman uh, taking DeSantis out. Mm. He's in big trouble. I've said for months now that I see him really involved in some kind of money, illicit activity with money, like money laundering or something, but um, he will be found out. Boy, you know what? The, the next generation really should all go to law school. Or, you know, if you're in college, you might want to switch to law because there's going to be plenty of work. Our, our justice system is being really tested. Okay. In the same lines, Jenny asks, will Beto win the Texas governor race? Let me see. Let me ask my pendulum. If we help him. The guys just said if we help him. Let me look at the pendulum. Will Beto win the governor's race? Uh, it's saying yes. I think I've asked this before and I got yes. But the guys clearly said if we help him. Hmm. Find out what Beto needs and send him money. Just do, you do, what, do what you need to do to help Beto. Because Beto is a good man. Speaking of good men, Bernie Sanders was up in Michigan and Battle Creek, I think it was, uh, fighting for the the cereal company employees and 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 the union came to an agreement and they won. Speaking of good people and government, Beto's hey. of that of that breed. So we're just about out of time, Annette. Did you want to pull a community card for Christmas before we say goodbye? For the collective? Yeah. By the way, as we're recording this, uh, as we're doing this, uh, in in Europe right now, it's. 
I guess it's it's nighttime. What time is it in Europe right now? Like dinner time? Well, London would be about eight o'clock right now. Frankly, oh, happy would be nine ish. Happy Christmas. Yeah, we're going to post this ASAP, folks. So, yeah, and we're going to be uh, with uh, Linda G., the Comanche Psychic, and Annette uh, on the 30th for a special 2022 prediction show. So, we'll keep you posted on that, too. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for all your time. Thanks for your questions. Keep them coming. And now, Annette, we end the show with a community card or a collective well, card. I picked three. Beautiful. Don't. Don't miss the blessings in disguise. Really, really, really important. When you look at something and it looks really, 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 really bad, like I'm just going to throw this out there. Perhaps Trump became president from a universal perspective so we would fix our democracy because it was really, really, really not secure at all, right? And, you know, it, it will bode well for future generations for us to fix it. So this, remember to look at the blessings in disguise. Don't miss it. And to think about things being on the up and up because the strength, the strength card has meant lately power to the people. The people have the power. I mean, and it's fun to get involved. We shouldn't all be wanting to isolate. That's, you know, we have enough of that, right? Mm. Nobody asked me when COVID was gonna end. Well, I think we kind of have an idea. <laughs> Never. 24 January. Yeah. Okay, Annette, Merry Christmas to you. Thanks for your time. To all the viewers out there, uh, happy holidays to all of you. Uh, we will be back ASAP. Annette and I are trying to figure out our schedule so we can do more of these shows for you uh, and, and show off some different features as well. So uh, it's been a blast. Um, whatever. Hopefully you guys will learn a little bit more about both of us in the upcoming weeks and months. But uh, be safe. Be well. We will see you ASAP. Uh, just follow us uh, and we will get uh, all the info to you on future shows uh, just as we know. Once we figure it out, you know. Yeah, we'll figure it out. So Merry Christmas to everyone. Um, we will be back before the new year. We might do a New Year's Eve day show. We're talking about that. Mm -hmm. Me and Corey. Um, in addition to the one with Linda G on the 30th. And um, if you are seeing this and it's before 9 p.m. Eastern time. I'm doing a service on Facebook, not Facebook. I used to be on Facebook, I race Facebook on YouTube on my channel. So go to my channel, Annette Dion. There you have it, folks. And Merry, Merry. Psychic News Network is there too. Merry, Merry. Thank you so much. See ya.